This week on Healthy Living, a close look at workers' health and safety. Plus, health officials are tackling another Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And the kangaroo method keeps premature babies in close contact with their mothers in Côte d'Ivoire. These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Lina Hmoudou. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. Get this, hundreds of millions of people fall sick or are injured at work every year and nearly 3 million workers around the world die due to occupational accidents and diseases. That's according to ILO, the International Labour Organization. An injury at work or a work-related illness can happen to anyone. However, some occupations can be more dangerous than others. The American National Safety Council reports that sleeps, trips, falls, overexertion, bodily reactions, and contact with objects and equipment account for at least 80% of all non-fatal injuries involving days away from work. But in 2020, exposure to harmful substances or environment was in the lead due to COVID-19. The World Health Organization estimates that the risks for work-related illnesses in developing countries are 10 to 20 times higher than in developed countries, and only about 10% of workers have access to occupational health services. At Los Parra Mines in Lobatera, Venezuela, workers start their day early in the morning. The town near the border with Colombia has 50 small-scale mines, each made up of 8 to 10 workers and the responsibility of holding up the tunnels with only wood to prevent a collapse falls on the worker. And they say the lack of oxygen and little emergency equipment makes for precarious and exhausting work conditions. There are problems with security. You face so much danger down there. Anything can happen to you. A mining accident recently happened in Serbia where eight people died. There is a huge grief. Eight miners of the Soko mine died in the early morning. They suffocated, so there was no explosion of any kind nor anything else that happened. Simply, the concentration of methane was so high that they suffocated. While mining tops the list of jobs that have risky conditions, workers' conditions can be dangerous above ground as well. For example, IQ Air, a Swiss air quality technology company, says India is home to 63 of the 100 most polluted cities in the world. And traffic policemen suffer from various respiratory issues and even heart problems. Doctors say long-term exposure to polluted air can cause health problems such as lung cancer and reduced blood oxygen levels that can lead to irregular heartbeats. According to the World Health Organization, only about 10% of workers in developing countries have access to occupational health services to protect them. Every year, people celebrate World Day for Safety and Health at Work on April 28 to bring awareness to prevention of accidents and diseases at work. Many workers around the world risk their lives while performing dangerous tasks, and oftentimes when an injury occurs, little or nothing is done to help them get compensated or treated. Let's listen to some workers in Angola who share their experiences. My hand didn't come back to normal to be able to do what it did before. I do some things, but with difficulty. I lost the ability to move some of my fingers, so there are many things I can't hold, some tools I can't pick up. When I'm on the line, I have to wear a protective suit, a vest, the helmet, gloves and knee pads. I have to keep one meter distance with my detector. And since I'm on this job, I never had an accident. On that day, it started raining around 10 p.m. The tent was already in bad shape. With the heavy rain, the tent couldn't hold it and collapsed on top of me. I'm still under treatment, but on and off because I have no support from the company. They fired me. 
Professor Jean-Sylvain Bonny is Professor of Occupational Medicine at the Félix Oufouet Boigny University of Cocody in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, and also Head of Occupational Health Teaching Units at the UFR Sciences Médicales in Abidjan. He elaborates on issues related to workers' health in Africa. When we talk about occupational health and safety, it's quite broad and includes different disciplines such as occupational hygiene, industrial hygiene. It is the discipline which aims to prevent and control all risks during working hours. There is also ergonomics, the adaptation of working condition to physiology and security. We have in our country several laws that make it possible to compensate the worker. The labor code, the social insurance code, or social security. But one of the major challenges in our African country is the informal sector, which is often organized through association, non-governmental organizations, etc. A lot needs to be done for the health and safety of the workers in this sector. The other challenge is training. It is important to train the human capital, the workers at all levels, from the nurse to the doctors, the first responders, the hygienists and others, which will make it possible to create a network in order to effectively take care of the workers. Also, being able to visit workers periodically before hiring and after illness. It allows us to anticipate the well-being of the workers. It is also important to have prevention approach and not wait after an illness to see a doctor. My advice to people in the informal sector is to organize in groups because it's more difficult individually, be it the mechanics, the craftsmen, the farmers or others. We as experts must go to these groups, the cooperatives, or provide them with the necessary elements to take charge of their health. It is important that as work, health, and safety legislation involves the practice of occupational hygiene, ergonomics, safety, and toxicology, as well as the support for workers' health and safety involves at the same time. In a move that contributes to workers' health and safety, Kenya developed application that aimed to improve fish farming has also helped women traders avoid being pressured by fishermen into sex to secure shrinking fish stocks. Rud Emendorp reports. Karen Omondi, a mother of six, trades fish in Kizumu along Lake Victoria. She's picking up goods she ordered on an app called Aquaretch. It allows her to avoid contact with fishermen who may demand sex in return for fish. It's a problem faced by women fish traders. You build up a lot of debt and it's difficult to pay it back. So you keep saying you pay later, but you end up repaying the debt by having Jaboya sex with the fisher. Jaboya means customer, and this practice has been rampant on the shores of Lake Victoria. Women advocates say the problem is driven in part by poverty and diminishing fish stocks caused by overfishing. So they would uh, feel that they need to be involved in this phenomena to support their families, yeah? especially in, in female-headed households. With cage fishing increasing the supply of fish to sell, the incidents of sexual exploitation have come down over the past 10 years, according to the Research Institute. Officials also predict the AquaEdge app will bring the numbers down even further. We have been amazed to see what the impact of the innovation has had in terms of how many women are now able to trade on fish in a free and open environment without subjecting themselves to the dehumanizing act of sex for fish trade. The company hopes to expand to neighboring counties and aims to enroll some 2,000 fish traders by the end of this year. As for Karen Omondi, she has set up a fish stand in her village and she says she's relieved she can sell her fish without fear of being sexually exploited.
the Democratic Republic of Congo has launched a vaccination campaign after two people died of Ebola in the northwestern town of Mbandaka. About 200 doses of the RVSV Zebov Ebola vaccine have been shipped to Mbandaka in Equator province from the eastern city of Goma, with more doses to be delivered in the coming days. The vaccination campaign uses the ring strategy where all contacts of confirmed Ebola patients and contacts of contacts are jabbed along with frontline and health workers. The WHO says at least 230 contacts have been identified so far around Mbandaka and are being monitored. Ebola is a viral hemorrhagic fever transmitted in humans through body fluids. The main symptoms being fever, vomiting, bleeding and diarrhea. Meanwhile, the WHO and the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, have announced that reported cases of measles had jumped 79% worldwide during the first two months of the year, compared with the same last year period. Most outbreaks have been reported in Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean region. According to WHO Africa, other vaccine-preventable diseases are also on the rise, including polio and yellow fever due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has overwhelmed health systems. In Abidjan, the economic capital of Côte d'Ivoire, a hospital is experimenting with a different method, which makes it possible to fight more effectively against the infant mortality of premature babies, a serious problem in the West African country. Thanks to the kangaroo mother method, premature children stay connected to the natural warmth of their mother, an approach inspired by the Australian animal. Yasin Sio has the story. For this 40-year-old mother, the last two weeks have been trying. On her arrival in this somewhat unusual unit, her daughter, Ouma, weighed only 1.44 kilograms. But thanks to the care provided and especially to the mother kangaroo method, the infant, constantly stuck to her mother's chest, gained some 300 grams. Today, her days are no longer in danger and the mother can finally breathe a big sigh of relief. <laughs> The child is doing better. She evolves easily, but it did me good. I feel better. I know that when I get out of here, the child is going to leave. He will be better. And I learned a lot of things about premature babies. Studies show that this kangaroo method or skin-to-skin -skin method of holding the baby to your chest enables healthier development of premature babies. The infant sleeps better and does not feel the stress that an incubator can cause. We are like a family here. Each watches over the other. Each ensures that the rules here are applied. That is, carry the child in the kangaroo for all activities, except going to the toilet. We hold each other accountable. Dr. Some Miazu is the head of the kangaroo mother care unit at Trechville Hospital. He trained in South Africa on this particular method and estimates that before the opening of the unit, Babies weighing less than one kilogram would systematically die, and while those weighing 1.5 kilograms had very little chance of surviving. Beyond survival, that is the bond between mother and child. The child was born premature. The mother was not prepared to receive at that moment. And the child was not ready to come out, so she has a fear inside her, afraid to carry them. So putting him on her chest reassures her. This approach also makes it possible to change society as a whole. The third advantage that we can cite is the stigma of premature babies. We don't give them a name because we are not sure they will survive. They are left to their own devices. The family who didn't believe in this at all sees that the child can live, so it changes the negative views they may have. The doctor says the Trechville University Hospital, the next extension of the center, also provides a space to train healthcare workers in Ivory Coast and neighboring countries. For the latest news and coverage on the coronavirus, stay connected to Voice of America at voanews.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Lenore Moudou. That's our show for today. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.